The British certainly know a thing or two about making tanks. The Brits were the first to employ tanks in battle. They are also the makers of the legendary Centurion MBT and also the people who designed its 105 Royal Ordnance L7 cannon, somewhat of a gold standard for tank guns. Today, we're going to talk about one very special type of vehicles made by the British, their heavy armor, the Conqueror, the Churchill, and their other armor-clad brethren. The first thing that you have to know is that the British had a separate, distinct group of tanks called infantry tanks. According to the concept, an infantry tank was a well-armored vehicle capable of breaking through enemy defenses and supporting Allied infantrymen in an attack. That's something of an area of expertise for a lot of conventional heavies made in other countries as well. It's also worth noting that Brits created a few heavy tanks before they developed the concept of infantry tanks. One good example being the A1E1 Independent. This design was conceived in the early 1920s. Seeking for an alternative to the rhomboidal tanks of World War I, the British engineers came up with an idea of a mobile, multi-turreted land battleship armed with a variety of machine guns and cannons, an idea that seemed very promising at the time. The Independent didn't make it past the prototype stage, though, with a single prototype vehicle used for experiments for almost 10 years, but never going into actual production. It was also an extremely expensive project as well, costing the British several hundred thousand pounds, an astronomical sum at that time. Today, this extremely influential design can be found in the Bovington Tank Museum and in War Thunder as a premium vehicle. A good example of a proper infantry tank is, obviously, the majestic Matilda. The vehicle rolled off of the production line after only three years in development, time well spent as it turned out, as in 1939, when the Matilda was just coming into service, it had more armor than any of its potential adversaries. It was no slouch in the firepower department as well, right until Tigers and Panthers made their appearance. Its humble two-pounder did a pretty good job, all things considered. At the same time, the Matilda was notoriously difficult to manufacture and to maintain. It saw extensive use in combat, but its production ended in 1943. Britain got its most produced heavy tank after the start of World War II, though, in 1941. We're talking about the Churchill. Vauxhall engineers envisioned it as a slow, heavy protected vehicle. As a true infantry tank, the first model didn't have much in terms of firepower. The standard two-pounder just wasn't powerful enough by that point, and the tank's three-inch howitzer fitted in the hull was only meant to be used against enemy infantry. To solve this issue, British engineers equipped later variants of the tank with increasingly bigger cannons. For example, the Mark III got a more respectable six-pounder gun, while the Mark VII was already armed with a 75mm cannon. Armor was also becoming increasingly thicker the armor fitted on the Mark VII was comparable to the defenses found on the Tiger II. Eventually, all of that work led to the creation of the Black Prince, available in War Thunder as a premium vehicle. In real life, the first ever Black Princes were built just as the war in Europe was ending. But in War Thunder, this experimental design gets its own chance to shine.
By the end of World War II, the British abandoned the familiar cruiser and infantry tank dichotomy in favor of a new universal tank concept. What they wanted was a well-balanced combat vehicle that could be produced in large numbers. They were aiming for that with the Centurion. But even that vehicle, considered to be one of the most successful post-war tank designs, wasn't enough for the military. They greenlit the A45 project, basically an initiative to get an updated and scaled-up Centurion. As it often happens with experimental vehicles, though, the project was hit with delays. At one point, as a kind of an interim solution, the A45 hull was mated with a 20-pounder armed Centurion turret to give, ta-da, the FV-221 Carnarvon. The new design was tested in the early 1950s, but never entered service. The team behind the project was waiting for a 120mm gun. The work on the last progeny of the A45 project, the Conqueror tank, finished only by 1955. The Conqueror was an impressive vehicle with decent armor and a good gun, <laughs> but it was slow, with a somewhat dated suspension design, and it was hardly a universal tank by any stretch of the imagination. Just a few years later, the Centurion was upgraded to an L7 105mm gun, and then the British got their MBT, the Chieftain. By that point, it was painfully clear that there was no need for slow breakthrough tanks anymore. Their time was over. Even though vehicles like the Carnarvon and the Independent were never used in actual combat, they can still prove their worth in endless battles of War Thunder. Here, these majestic metal beasts can fight their counterparts from other nations with their fearsome armaments always ready for battle. What are your favorite British heavies? Do you like any vehicles we've mentioned today? Come on, please tell us in the comments. We'd really like to know.